since we have uh, largely forgotten uh, what is the biggest environmental disaster in this country, thanks to uh, the help of BP ad campaigns, uh, let me take you back. When we talk about the Gulf oil spill, we're not just talking about an oil spill. We're talking about a chemical experiment because of the amount of toxic chemicals that were poured onto a petroleum spill. This is uh, the Gulf story. This is also my story. I've been very, very deeply involved in the Gulf, and it's actually changed my life. Um, I was asked a month after the spill to go down to advise fisheries about what was going on with Corexit. So much was being sprayed and injected uh, underwater, mile deep. So we went out about 40 miles off the Louisiana coast. Planes were flying overhead, spraying. Oil was gushing from the wellhead. This is the NASA photograph, the exact day that I was there. Uh, you can see the oil spreading. The solvent fumes were so heavy in the air that we almost passed out. I dove in the oil slick. I was the uh, first scientist to dive in, actually, to see what was going on, and what I saw horrified me. Underwater, the oil's breaking up. It was a cloud of death. Then I was uh, later appointed to uh, the Department of Interior's uh, Strategic Sciences Working Group, SSWG. We were charged with assessing consequences of spill and recommending policy to the agency. We were a group of 14 of us in an intensive session. Here's what we told the agencies. It's not about dose. There is no safe level of exposure to the carcinogens in the oil. Once it gets in the body, it's a ticking time bomb. This did not make them happy, I can tell you that. Uh, correct it multiplies the toxicity of oil because it delivers the oil into the body. The Gulf spill means we're going to be looking at human health effects for decades to come. So this was my memo to the uh, agencies. And needless to say, the publication uh, never saw the light of day, and our message fell on deaf ears. Now, very early on, BP had started spinning this disaster to what? Limit liability. Now we know totally what, what was going on. Although it was confusing at the time, there was so much disinformation. They underestimated the oil flow rate, which was 60,000 gallons a day, not 1,000. The vast majority of the oil was not gone. Actually, this is a statement from one of our agency heads early on uh, that was later retracted. And our agencies were in lockstep with BP. That's important to know. They were not exactly the chorus. They were making some of these statements. There are no plumes. That was a NOAA statement. Uh, dispersants are harmless. And it's probably just heat stress. These people couldn't possibly be affected by the oil. You remember this one? Corexit is as harmless as Dawn. We know that Corexit contains 2-butoxyethanol, which is a solvent that causes internal bleeding. It was used in the Exxon Valdez oil spill. And um, following that oil spill, uh, all of the workers have died at the average age of 52. So it's also interesting to look at the material da safety data sheets, which EPA had, BP had. These are from BP's uh, records. And you see this cluster of sim symptoms, internal bleeding, injury, kidney, liver, nervous system damage, vomiting, drying of skin, et cetera. Now, chemical pneumonia. These are the symptoms we're seeing today in people in the Gulf, thousands of people. Not to mention that Corexit was banned in 18 countries because of its toxicity. There's no mystery about Corexit whatsoever. This is interesting. It's um, Exxon slide recommended gear that workers are supposed to wear when they're handling Corexit. You see the hazmat suit, you see the full respiratory um, protection, gloves, the whole works. 
but the uh, cleanup workers were actually told not to wear their respirators. Some of them went out and bought respirators because they were not furnished respirators. VP boats came up to their boats, told them, don't wear those things, it looks bad. So you have uh, 170,000 people were involved in this, in the cleanup of the Gulf oil spill. These people had no safety training. They were told not to, to protect themselves. So this is the unconscionable part of it for me. The workers on the boats like this, the shrimp boats, they were so affected that they would pass out on the boat, out cold, have to be helicoptered off. Um, now we know that thousands of people have gotten sick, thousands of people are sick with this same cluster of symptoms from the oil and the corrected. The big ones are nervous system damage, heart palpitations, uh, liver damage, skin damage, and uh, internal bleeding. We know that the exposure occurred now because hundreds of workers have had their blood tested and they found high levels of volatile organic compounds in the blood, xylene, hexane, benzene, which is a carcinogen. There's a new study linking the exposure to effects in people. This just came out. The blood profiles, I'll just boil it down, of the people basically show that they're at risk for liver and kidney damage and cancer. No, no mystery, that's just what we are always predicted. And the phenol levels in their urine show that um, it's a pattern that's common with people exposed to benzene. So as I was saying before, benzene is, uh, causes leukemia in people. Um, I'm going to show you now how the Corexit works to multiply the oil toxicity. Corexit goes um, immediately into the skin. This is, these, you can see the Corexit under fluorescence. And again, the white marks under fluorescence are the Corexit. Corexit takes the oil right into the body quickly. And once the oil is in there, the, the uh, carcinogens are, are working. We do have a human health crisis in the Gulf. It's true. Uh, Michael Robichaud is a physician who is one of the few doctors down there treating chemical exposure. He's one of the few doctors, in fact, that even recognizes what it looks like. Um, he has sounded the alarm, saying this is the biggest public health crisis from a chemical poisoning in the history of this country. I was also in the Gulf a year after the spill, and I interviewed people, and I can tell you it's one thing to see these symptoms on, on a page, on a screen. It's another one to experience the, the anguish that people are going through down there. You can see from this clip that I, ha I have been very personally involved and personally affected. The reason we're here today is that we're talking to people here who are sick. Most of these people live in really close proximity to the beach. And uh, during the hot months, the vo oil was volatilizing and there was a lot of vapor and solvent in the air. Um, right after the oil spill, Pretty much a lot, most of the students in the school got sick. After like maybe a week, I had a horrible cough and then I had high fevers. I had fevers up to one and 3.9 every night. I'd been having breathing problems and the doctor thought I had asthma and I didn't. I ended up with two really fierce um, ear infections. I've never had ear infections before. You know, I've been having a constant cough, you know, sinus problems, bleeding out my nose sometimes. And she diagnosed me with pneumonitis, which, mm -hmm. you know, is chemical burning of the lining of my lungs. You know, it's constant burn in my chest, nervousness, you know, and I got a group that's coming out on my eye. That started on the oil spill. You just got your test results. results. Tell yes, me they, what it, you remember of that. Well, what, I got an exine in my blood, ethanol poisoning. Essentially, you have chemical poisoning. Yes, ma'am. Right? Right, chemical and, poisoning. And you have very high levels Everybody. of the chemical. This is heartbreaking. I am a scientist. I came here as a scientist. I'm working on a project here. And uh, it's just hard to um, hear the uh, incredible sadness and suffering. Remember this guy, Tony Hayward? Oh. 
So after he came up with this statement of how modest the impact of the spill was going to be, they pretty much banished him to England, <laughs> where he resumed his life of uh, yacht racing. Remember seeing him on the yacht? So, but again, this is a relentless attempt to deny that the exposure from the uh, oil spill caused any health problems whatsoever. They set up this Gulf Coast Claims Fund of $20 billion, and hundreds of health complaints came in from people. All of them have been denied. This is because BP does not want to admit, this is a refusal to admit that the, the oil spill caused any health problems. The es exposure is ongoing now. You think it's gone? It's not. The par mats are, are washing up on all the beaches. That was Florida. This is Louisiana. Over three million pounds of these tar mats have shown up on Louisiana coast this year alone. The oil has been tested. It's getting actually more toxic. There's oil in the food web. The Tulane University research team found the oil in the crabs. The oil in fish have been found. And you know, you've heard about the deformities. The shrimp with no eyes, shrimp with tumors. The, lo the catch is 80% down. They think it'll never come back, but we have the happiness of the BP campaign, relentless. I'm gonna show you some of this. Come on down to the Gulf Coast, you all know this. Actually, we can be relieved because things down there are actually better than before the oil spill, right? I feel great about that. Okay, so they spent $195 million on this campaign so far. Their commitment remains strong to our welfare. And uh, sadly, their revenues are down. Um, it's really terrible, only 94 billion second quarter revenues for the past two years. Oil production exceeding expectation. They're moving into Prudhoe Bay, Alaska, investing in oil drilling there. So what's got to happen? This is what I'm working on. Four things. People in the Gulf need medical treatment. They need coverage, compensation. Physicians need to be educated so they can recognize what chemical poisoning looks like and treat it. We need to reform EPA uh, policies, get those find safe alternative to these toxic chemicals used in oil spills. And finally, ban correct it. It's time. This is what I'm working on now. I'm going back to the Gulf. But I must tell you, as the health disaster worsens down there, uh, this is going to happen again if we stay on present course. Corrected is the standard operating procedure now for oil spills. It's on the EPA's proof list. BP is uh, staunchly standing by Corrected. BP, by the way, owns the company that makes Corrected. Okay, you've heard my, my voice, and these are the voices of the people of the Gulf. Thank you.